in a letter written to the Christians in Corinth, the Apostle Paul deals at some length with the institution of the Lord's Supper. Paul told the people that Jesus had supper with his friends, that he took bread, broke it, gave it to them, told them to eat it. And after the meal, Jesus poured wine into a cup and gave it to his friends. Let us gather at Jesus' table where all are welcome to recognize him in the breaking of bread and the outpouring of the cup. Welcome to communion at First Baptist Church, Brantford. Thank you to those who are participating in our service. Nancy Bullivant, our Minister of Music, Deanna Perso, our flutist, and Robbie Nagel, assisting us with streaming. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Christ. For the bread and for the cup and for the life we have received, we thank you. Grant that what we have been given may remain always in our hearts. May we grow in Christian love and understanding so that ours may be lives of faithful action. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our lesson is from the Gospel of Luke. Jesus said, people will come from east and west, from north and south, and will take their places at the banquet in the kingdom of God. And then later in Luke we read, then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover meal for us, that we may eat it. They asked him, Where do you want us to make preparations for it? Listen, he said to them, When you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house he enters and say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks you, Where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, already furnished. Make preparations for us there. So they went and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup and after giving thanks, he said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. Thanks be to God for this reading.
do this in remembrance of me. These are the familiar words of the institution of the Lord's Supper. When the bread is broken, we are reminded that Christ's body was broken for us. We are reminded that Christ is the bread of life, that we are his body now. When the cup is lifted, we are reminded of Christ's suffering and death. We are reminded of the meaning of sacrifice, of the new covenant that has become ours. Remembrance shapes the way we observe the Lord's Supper. Our memories are integral to discovering the spiritual depths of gathering around the Lord's table in finding hope, fellowship, meaning, and love, and service through our participation. Remembering is a very human activity. Memories have a powerful and potent influence upon us. They have the ability of preserving those people, times, and places that have made life special or meaningful. Many of these experiences have helped shape our character, our morality, our outlook on life, our attitudes, our behavior. We would not be who we are without these past influences. We learn from the past. Healthy remembering may keep us from repeating mistakes or rushing ahead without thinking or losing our connections with core values that have stood the test of time. Of course, there are negative and unhappy memories too, ones that leave scars, bitterness, fear, anger, and feelings of hopelessness. Therefore, we must balance remembering with healthy forgetting. Theologian Paul Tillich wrote, if too much is preserved and too little forgotten, the way toward the future is barred. The past overpowers the future. Friends, there is no joy, no freedom, no hope in simply holding on to and repeating the past. Healthy remembering requires that we let go of that which would bind us and prevent us from moving toward the future. One of the other things that remembering does is to help us see and learn from past events that what was once promised is as true and viable today as it was when first experienced. In remembering, People revisit those times in order to reconnect and rekindle promises made and given. For example, when a couple celebrates a wedding anniversary, they recall not only the day's events, but the meaning and the power of the vows may be recalled as well. Thus, the power of that memory of those actions still directs their lives and relationship together. Likewise, the church looks back at the life of Jesus and remembers the fellowship it shared with him. We remember the meals he ate with outsiders and tax collectors and with his disciples. The Lord's Supper helps to recreate that memory of fellowship with Jesus. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we recall what Christ has done and continues to do. We remember that we are claimed by God's love, that we are still Christ's body in this time and place. At the Lord's table, we remember that he said, I am with you always till the end of the age. The Christian message tells the story of Jesus who was crucified and whom God raised from the dead. 
Our present and our future flow from this past. The church is the community that gathers us to remember this. We work with a powerful memory that affirms our fellowship, service, worship, and life, reminding us that God is faithful, that God is active in our midst. When we eat this bread and drink of the cup, we step into the memory so that it reveals its power to us. This memory keeps us close to Christ and therefore close to God. It is our response to God that we have not abandoned God or our commitments to God. And it is this memory that gives energy for all the work that we are called to do in proclaiming the gospel through social action, generosity of stewardship, freedom for worship, courage in caring for others, and passion for God's promises. Jesus has given us the instruction to come to his table and to share in fellowship with one another. This keeps us connected to him and to each other, even if physically we need to be apart. It keeps alive the church as Christ nourishes us through his spirit and the symbols of his presence. It keeps open the door of the future as we wait for his return in ways that are beyond our imagination. Do this in remembrance of me. As long as we do this, we remember whose we are and what it is that we are called to be, the Church of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, we gather in the joy of fellowship with you. We thank you for the gift of life given through Jesus Christ. He came among us preaching good news to all, healing the sick and comforting the lonely. He showed us your way and gathered us together into one family. On the night before he died, while at supper with his friends, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke and gave it to all of them, saying, Take and eat this bread. This is my body given for you. He also took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all his friends, saying, Take and drink. This is my blood given for you. Send your spirit upon us so that we may know that all who eat and drink at your table, wherever they may partake, are one body, one people. We bring to you now our prayers for others. We pray for the sick, for the hungry, the lonely, and the fearful. We remember those feeling the ache of loss and bereavement. Come close to them, and may they know that neither life nor death can separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus. Loving God, you create all people in your image without exception. Open our minds to understand that we are all sisters and brothers in the same human family. May your spirit of healing and wholeness prevail where there is hatred and anger. Help us to renounce all forms of violence. We pray for the church that its prophetic voice may proclaim to all the challenge to break the cycles of racism, prejudice, and poverty, which degrade the sacred dignity of humankind. And we pray for peace, peace in the world, in our communities, in our homes. Hear our prayers, O God, that we offer in Jesus' name. He taught his disciples when they pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you forever. Amen. of your sins, who have love and concern for your neighbors, who intend to lead a new life, following the commandment of God by walking in holy ways, draw near with reverence, faith, and thanksgiving, and take the supper of the Lord to your comfort. Come to this sacred table, not because you must, but because you may. Come to testify not that you are righteous, but that you sincerely love our Lord Jesus Christ and desire to serve him. We are come together today in obedience to our Lord's command to partake of the Lord's Supper, to its blessing and fellowship, all disciples of the Lord Jesus who have confessed him before others and desire to serve him may come. This is not our table but the table of the Lord. The Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us give thanks for the bread. Loving God, you feed our souls, you nourish our hearts, and you give sustenance for our journey. As we lift our hearts in thanksgiving and partake of this bread, we ask that we might be renewed to serve you faithfully. Amen. Let us eat of this bread in remembrance of Christ's body given for you. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us give thanks for the cup. Merciful God, we are reminded of your gift of love and our call to live faithfully. As we drink of the cup, may it be with the assurance of your love for us that knows no bounds. We thank you for all your mercies. Amen. Jesus said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you and be thankful.
we read that when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Let us pray. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Jesus Christ. For the bread we have eaten, for the cup we have received, for the life we have received, we thank you. Grant that what we have done and have been given here may remain always in our hearts. Grant that we may grow in Christian love and understanding and that ours may be lives of faithful action. We pray in Christ's name. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you forever. Amen.